Hey everybody, I'm back. It's been a while since I last made a video. It's been a while since I even streamed. I will tell you why. For those of you who have been watching me for a long time, and for those of you who know me, uh, I hate the heat. The heat knocks me out. When it's too hot, I, just, I pass out because I cannot stand the heat. Another reason I've been trying to learn more editing styles is I, I'm the only editor. I'm the only one that edits my videos. I don't have, you know, no one that helps or anything. I do it myself. Um, I do really basic stuff. I don't do, like, funny stuff or anything like that. And I've been trying to learn how to do more stuff like that. Um, like, I've been trying to add subtitles. But I've been trying to add subtitles. I've been trying to have add, like, funny pictures. So, like, silly moments and stuff like that. And um, it's honestly kind of hard. Like, when you're learning it by yourself, it's honestly kind of hard. And um, I'm pretty sure all of you know, uh, E3 was going on. Today was Nintendo's day. I mean, E3's still going, but the main stuff, the main stuff pretty much went on. And boy, do I have a list of the things I want to talk about. Now, keep in mind, as the video title says, these are my thoughts and opinions on this year's E3, I will be talking about all the conferences from EA all the way to Nintendo. I'll be talking about a lot of good things and some bad things, honestly. Alright, let's talk about EA. <sighs> EA. My God. I feel so bad for EA. Never have I heard such a dead crowd at an E3 thing. And I think this is like the first video I'm ever making about E3. But I've actually seen the other E3s before. And this crowd, EA's crowd was pretty dead. There was barely anyone cheering. Uh, every time the girl they hired to go like, woo, like that to get the crowd like hyped up. Nobody would join her. And she would just stand there with this face like, oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, EA was pretty bad. In my opinion. Not all hope was lost though. EA did show me. Two things that caught my attention. They showed me Star Wars Battlefront 2. Clone Wars DLC. That got me hyped. Because I do like Battlefront 2. I like the Star Wars Battlefront 2 game. No I'm not one of those people that complain about the loot boxes. I never cared about that. As long as I had fun with the game. And as long as I had fun with my friends in the game. I didn't give a damn. About the loot box system they had in the game. Did not care one bit. So that's kind of cool. That they're bringing Clone Wars DLC stuff. And I hope they bring a Clone Wars story mode as well. For them to add. Anakin, Obi-Wan, Count Dooku. And General Grievous. They have to do something with story. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Battlefield 5. Battlefield 1. I played it. I played it with my little brother. And my friend. In the beginning we liked it. We didn't mind the loot box system, honestly, because it you never really paid mind to it, because the game's just like so much fun. But after a while, Battlefield One just died. It's compared to the other Battlefield games. I'm a big fan of Battlefield. I started with three because my friends on 360. I would always hear them playing the game. I would always hear them talking about these little shenanigans that they're doing while they're playing, and I decided to join in. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with three. I played four. And my favorite is Hardline, because <laughs> Hardline is just really fun to me with the cops and robbers game modes. And then we came to 1. 1, one was cool for what it is, but after a while, it just got really, really boring. Compared to the other Battlefield games, it was really boring. And I sold it. I sold my copy of 1. Uh, fr my friend sold his copy of 1. I think my little brother still has his copy of Battlefield 1. But, yeah, it was really bad. And then they show Battlefield 5. Don't know why they went... I don't know why they go from 1 to 5. <laughs> they show Battlefield 5, where Battlefield 1 was World War 1. Battlefield 5 is World War 2. They showed it. They showed gameplay. And I hear a lot of people are complaining because the main character is a girl. So... So what? <laughs> Honestly, who cares? But the stuff they showed might bring me back to Battlefield. 
And yeah, they, they added the cheesy Battle Royale mode. I don't know why a lot of games are doing that nowadays. It's just really stupid. But Battle Royale and Battlefield, I do not mind, considering the Battlefield games are famous for having big, huge multiplayer maps filled with a lot of people. So a Battle Royale mode in a Battlefield game, just tanks, jeeps, helicopters, jets, all that stuff. That sounds fun to me. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I stayed, I stayed, I, I stayed on the EA conference because I was waiting for this one game my little brother talked about called Anthem. Never heard of it, never seen it. I've only seen one picture of it. They finally show Anthem. My God, this game looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. It sounds beautiful. It sounds cool and fun. But then, but then you start to realize the more they talked about the game, the more they showed gameplay. The more they talk about the power armor, they even showed the powers of certain power armors. <sighs> Bioware, I know Bioware is famous for making games like Mass Effect and other stuff, but you're honestly not trying to hide it. This is their version of Destiny. There's even a character in Anthem that plays exactly like one of the one of the uh, one of the characters from Destiny. Destiny 1 or 2, I think. <laughs> Instead of flying around on motorcycles, you're literally flying around on jetpacks. You go from base, you go from mission to base, mission to base, mission to base. It's Destiny. This is their version of Destiny. So, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that like Destiny. One of my friends actually likes Destiny. But me, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan. I gave it a try before. In the beginning, it was fun, but then it, it just got so repetitive, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Mission, home base, mission, home base, mission, home base, mission, home base. And honestly, I don't think it's gonna be a big thing. I'm pretty sure the Destiny fans are gonna go to it, and then Destiny's gonna die because of that. But yeah. That was EA's, that was EA's um, E3 for me. And then we move on to PlayStations. Oh, God. PlayStation. No, not PlayStation. Microsoft. I'm bugging out. <laughs> Microsoft. The first thing they show that interests me is from software. I was like, <gasps> I was holding my hands on the chair. I was clenching my butt. I was ready. I was ready. Because after beating all the Dark Souls games... After beating Dark Souls 3, after playing my first time through Bloodborne and the Bloodborne DLC, and then seeing that trailer they showed of Shadows Die Twice, I did not expect a Samurai Souls game. Yeah, I understand there's the Noah, Noe game, N-I-O-H game, and I'm sure that they saw how big of a success that game was, because out of all the Souls-like clones out there, uh, Noe is actually really popular to the point that they even made a second game and they even showed it at E3. But Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I'm honestly looking forward to that, especially the gameplay. You have so much freedom when it comes to the movement. It's not like Dark Souls or Bloodborne where all you have is just running, you double tap the button to jump, you climb ladders, you roll, you slide when you dodge in Bloodborne. That's all that had. This game had a lot of stuff. You have a grappling hook that can take you places. You have... Oh, there's just too much to say. And I'm honestly looking forward to that. And then the main event. Because every... Microsoft showed this. PlayStation showed this. I love it. Kingdom Hearts 3. Finally. Finally a release date to Kingdom Hearts 3. Microsoft showed a Frozen trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. And then Sony showed a, oh no, it's not Sony, Square Enix showed the Ratatouille version of that trailer. I cannot wait. Everyone is freaking out about the trailer. Everyone's, there's so many memes going around about Xehanort Aqua or Darkness Consumed Aqua, whatever the hell you want to call her. You got Replica Riku back for some strange freaking reason. I, I don't know what's going on, but then I saw the newest trailer. I was asleep during this. I saw the newest trailer. My friends told me to check it out. And 
I was really excited for this one because I'm a huge Pirates fan. I love Pirates and I love Pirates of the Caribbean. To see Pirates of the Caribbean back again for Kingdom Hearts 3, I love how it begins. It begins with Sora and the gang on the little raft like, like Pirates 1 and then it cuts to the Pirates 3 movie of them bringing Johnny back back from the dead. Johnny Depp back from the dead. I cannot wait for that game. I cannot wait for that world. Even the battle music for that world was incredible. I'm really psyched for that game. You know, damn well, I'm going to stream the shit out of that game. <laughs> and then, we got Tales of Vesperia. I'm a huge Tales fan. The last two Tales, the last three Tales games Bandai made, I wasn't a fan of. Zestria, I wasn't a fan of. Besseria, I read into it. It was a prequel to Zestria. Did not care. They made a cell phone game that was actually pretty cool, but then it got boring after a while. And then they quietly deleted that cell phone game because a lot of people didn't like it. So I was wondering if they're going to make a new Tales game or if they're going to like remake one for like PS4 or something else. Lord behold, Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. They say it's they say Definitive Edition, but all it is is the PS3 version we never got in America because the PS3 version is the full-on complete version of Tales of Vesperia. And I hope, I hope they bring it to PS4 because I do not have an Xbox One or an Xbox One X, the hell, whatever the hell you want to call it. I hope they bring it to PS4 because I do like Tales of Vesperia. Devil May Cry 5. I've never played the Devil May Cry series. I've played Bayonetta. i played Bayonetta, but I've never played the Devil May Cry series. Uh, hearing that there was a fifth game coming out made me want to play the series. Because I did enjoy Bayonetta. And eventually I will buy the Devil May Cry collection. And Devil May Cry 4. But to see Devil May Cry 5 come back. A lot of people in the crowd were really excited. A lot of people a lot of people screaming at the top of their lungs. Just ah! And then you see old man Dante at the end of the trailer. And he looks weird as hell. <laughs> I don't know why he looks weird. But that's another thing I'm looking forward to. Cuphead. I don't have Cuphead, but I've seen the game because I do like the art style of the game. It's nice to see that a lot of people are still supporting Cuphead and that the Cuphead creators are still making content for the game in the form of a in the form of DLC with one new playable character and a new world to explore with new bosses and a new story. So that's pretty that's honestly something to look forward to for you Cuphead fans out there. I really do want to play the game. I know they have it for PC, but I don't think my computer can handle that game. Oh, this game. The next game on my list. Oh my god, this caught me by... This caught me by surprise. Jump Force. Or I'm pretty sure it's called Shonen Jump's Jump Force. This realistic looking anime game caught me by surprise. I played J-Stars. I never played the Shonen Jump games for like the DS. But I played J-Stars. And the only reason I played J-Stars was because I wanted to see the dialogue between some of my favorite anime characters exchanging dialogue with each other like he's Soka from Hunter x Hunter talking to the other characters that was my that has to be my favorite parts of the game he's Soka talking to the other characters considering how perverted he is when it comes to like a person who's powerful and he just wants to fight them to the death and stuff like that oh I love it as bad as the gameplay was I did I did I did like the game and to see Jump Force a anime fighting game look extremely realistic fighting in my hometown yes they were fighting in new york i was born in new york <laughs> that made me laugh but what really caught me off guard what really caught me off guard and surprised me and made me laugh was light yagami from death note at the end of the trailer i want to see light yagami fight so bad in this game i want to see him stroll up into the fight Pull out his book and just start writing like a madman. That's what I want to see. I want to see light. Just, oh, I can't wait for that game, honestly. I honestly cannot wait. Battletoads. I played one Battletoad game before. Really fucking hard. The Battletoad games are really hard, but they're very fun and famous as well. To see that Microsoft is bringing Battletoads back to the big screen, back to the video game screen, is really cool. And a lot of Xbox fans are going to enjoy that for people who are fans of Battletoads. And unfortunately, I don't have, you know, Xbox. Ah, uh, here we go. The weird part of Microsoft's conference. Gears of War Pop. 
What? Gears of War Pops, huh? A cell phone game where you play as pop figures of people from the Gears of War franchise. That's, uh... It's really interesting. And then it gets better. Gears of War Tactics. For those of you who have ever played uh, games, like a friend of mine made a perfect example. SOCOM, um, I think Halo Wars, uh, any top-down perspective shooter type tactical game. Uh, that's what Gears of War Tactics is. And it's pretty weird. The crowd was really quiet when they showed Gears of War Pops and Gears of War Tactics. And then they save it by showing Gears of War 5, which is a prequel that shows, I think, I didn't hear the guy correctly because the stream was really low volume. I think it is a prequel of the Gear series that shows the story of Dom and this other person. I don't have an Xbox. Like I said, I don't have an Xbox One. But I did. I do have a 360 and I'm a huge fan of the Gears of War series thanks to a friend of mine that introduced them to me. I played Gears of War 1, 2, 3, and 4. Wait, 4? Yeah, I played 4. And um, I was a really big fan. So it's kind of it's kind of cool to see that the Gears series is still going. Cyberpunk 2077. What the hell? <laughs> Seeing this trailer with my friend, we both thought it was Watch Dogs 3. I, I'd be all for a third Watch Dogs game. So I actually do like the Watch Dogs games. This game is weird. Apparently, it's an RPG where you make your own character. I mean... For those of you who watch anime, if you've ever seen Ghost in the Shell, that's what this game is. If you're a fan of Ghost in the Shell, there's your game right there, Cyberpunk 2077. I honestly don't have much to say about it because it was just weird. Halo Infinite. Don't know, when's this, don't know when this takes place. I assume it takes place after the last Halo game. But I do like the Halo series. I started off with three. I went to Reach, and then I played 1 and 2, and then I have 4, and then that's it, because the rest of them were on Xbox One. I'm a big fan of the Halo series. I do like the stories. Everyone loves Master Chief, and me personally, I love Master Chief's voice actor. And to see them keep going with Halo, hopefully this is the last Halo game in the series. Because I think, from what I remember, I think Cortana is still the bad guy. Uh, I think she escaped or something like that. I don't remember much from the story. But uh, it's nice to see. And from, from the looks of it and sound of the name, it sounds like it's going to be an open world Halo game. Which actually sounds pretty cool. Doom Eternal. I didn't play the new Doom because I honestly don't like the new Doom. I like old school Doom. I like old school Doom, you know, classic sprite ur, 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 Doom. That's the Doom I like, but it's nice to see that, you know, people are a big fan of the new Doom and that they're, they're still going with the new games. Fallout 76. I'm probably going to piss people off here. I don't care about Fallout. I'm not a fan of the Fallout series. Never cared. I looked at the game once. To me, it looked very boring. I, it's, it's because of the barren wasteland, honestly. I know the story, how it was like a nuclear war. I know why everything's a barren wasteland, but when it comes to games like that, they they need to put more. Cause Borderlands, uh, Borderlands two, and one was honestly, for most of the part, a barren wasteland. But there was a lot of cool stuff and a lot of weird shit in that barren wasteland. I played Fallout three. And I, I saw a little bit of 4. And it just, never, it just never caught my attention. But Fallout 76, it is a prequel to all the Fallout games. And it is online multiplayer. That would probably be the only Fallout game I would ever play. If, and only if, my friends do actually get the game. And then they showed the future where you can build your house. And I, I was like, I'm all for it. If my friends get the game, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to build my house. <laughs> Starfield. A new IP from Bethesda. Or however the hell you pronounce their name. They didn't really show much. All they showed was pretty much space. And a satellite in space. 
I'm assuming it's a No Man's Sky clone, considering No Man's Sky was honestly the only game to have open world universe. Where you can fly from planet to planet. You can land on planets and go into space. And I'm I'm guessing that's what they're going to do with Starfield. Because they didn't really show much on Starfield. So we honestly have to wait and see what happens. And then they end it all with a teased little video of Elder Scrolls 6. Elder Scrolls I am a fan of. I've only played Skyrim. I haven't played the other ones. I've played Oblivion. I'm remembering now. I've played Oblivion for a little bit because a friend let me borrow it. And I'm a big, 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 big fan of Skyrim. I love Skyrim. I played it first time on the 360. I got all the DLC, 100% of the game. I maxed out my character. I did all this stuff on Skyrim. And I, I, I love Skyrim. I love games like that. I love fantasy type games that do that stuff. And then the latest, the latest Elder Scrolls game I've been playing. But not that recently, but I've been playing it is Elder Scrolls Online. I do like Elder Scrolls Online. To see them announced in Elder Scrolls 6, I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm actually looking forward to that. We move on to Square Enix. <clears throat> A crossover between Final Fantasy 14 and Monster Hunter. What the hell? I love I like Final Fantasy 14. I do admit I play Final Fantasy 14 I like the game. I, I love the game, actually. It's fun. It's very fun. It's addictive, too. I don't buy things in the game. Like, I don't buy things from the Mog store. You know, like some people do. <laughs> and some people actually get, like, addicted to doing that, buying that stuff, to the point that they end up broke. To see them, at, to see them go across over with another favorite series of mine, Monster Hunter, I found it pretty cool. We get to fight my most hated enemy in Monster Hunter because I hate this enemy not because he's hard but because he's constantly flying around we get to fight Rathalos in Final Fantasy 14 Stormblood I honestly cannot wait to kick his ass I hate that dragon so much <laughs> Beyond Good and Evil 2 I don't know anyone that's played Beyond Good and Evil I've only know I only seen one youtuber that's a real big fan of the series I would not mention his name because I don't want to, you know, get in trouble. <laughs> but that you said that said YouTuber was looking forward to Beyond Good and Evil 2 for a very long time. And when they showed it, it looked pretty cool. I think they said it's a prequel. I, I couldn't hear it correctly because the tweet, like I said, the stream volume was really low. But from what it sounds like, it's a prequel. And it looked cool. But then they started talking about the reason why it's not finished yet. The creators of Beyond Good and Evil 2 straight up told the crowd and the people who, are, who were watching at home that they basically said, if you want us to finish the game, come help us. We have a website. Come make music for the game. Come make level designs for the game. And, you know, we'll put it in the game. I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that I'm assuming that Beyond Good and Evil 2 was never going to happen. But that there were so many fans demanding the game that they pretty much said, Alright, we'll do the game. But since the fans want it, the company doesn't want it, the fans want it, you guys got to finish the game. So I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why it actually appeared there. I don't know. Skull and Bones. I love pirates. Ubisoft showing me the pirate ship game that I want to play. Not that crappy Sea of Thieves. Skull and Bones. I cannot wait to play that game. I can't wait to play the beta. I hope they pick me for the beta. So I want to play the game. I love pirates. I love customizing the ship. I love, oh, love it so much. <laughs> Starlink. Ugh. A weird game that honestly looks like one of those old Hot Wheel cartoons. You're constantly flying around on ships. Apparently, the story is to gather as many people as you can to form a team to take down the big bad. The big bad. 
And since the game's also going to be on, I think, the Switch, for the, for the Nintendo Switch version, you get to play as Star Fox and his ship. That's, uh, that's interesting. Pretty interesting. I mean, I won't call the game back. The guy who made the game was actually pretty excited because, um, the only reason he added Star Fox into the game was because since he was a little kid, Star Fox was the first 3D game he's ever played, and he loves Star Fox. To the point that must, to the point that, um, one of the Nintendo people were there. I forgot his name. Ah, oh, I forgot his name. And they even gave him a Star Fox ship statue. That was pretty cool. For Honor. I love For Honor. The gladiator type medieval fighting game. I love For Honor. Love it ever since the beta. Bought it. Played it. Me and my little brother played through story mode on the hardest mode. And let me tell you, it was annoying on the hardest mode. And we enjoyed it. I mained, I mained Peacekeeper. He mains Orochi. We would just demolish people. But then after a while, it started getting boring. Because there was no new content. There was only patch notes. And that's it. We eventually stopped playing. But then Ubisoft comes out of nowhere. We're for honor marching fire sequel dlc to the story they're going to add a story mode campaign for after that takes place after the story four new characters and new maps we get to play as chinese warriors that's bringing me back sequel story sequel dlc new characters and new maps that's bringing me back to the game i'm, I'm downloading it right now on my ps4 i can't wait to play that Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Ooh. God, this game looks incredible. After playing Assassin's Creed Origins from beginning to end and playing the DLC that takes place after story mode. Wow, Ubisoft did a great move by changing how it was. Don't get me wrong, I loved how Assassin's Creed played in all the other games because once you play the first game, once you play any of the Assassin's Creed games, you can play the other ones because the other ones play exactly the same. My favorite one being Assassin's Creed 4, because, you know, yet again, I love pirates. And then going to Origins, it's like, oh my god, how do I play this? This is different. This RPG mechanics, the weapons have levels, you have levels, you have abilities. It is awesome. The world was huge. The world was open world. I think, I remember they tried to do the same thing for Assassin's Creed 1, but it didn't really work out when it came to the open world. And when they do it to Origins, it was just, oh, it was really good. I cannot wait for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm a big Marvel fan. I'm going to say that. Don't get me wrong. I love Batman. I love DC. But I love Marvel more. And my favorite hero in Marvel is Spider-Man. Always, always, always Spider-Man. To see that another Spider-Man game is coming out. And. And. It's being developed and made. By the same people. Who made the Amazing Spider-Man 1 game. That game was beautiful incredible fun oh and then some other team made the second game and it was, it was just uh ugh, it was really bad really bad i can't wait for spider-man and to top it all off top it all off the homie spyro is coming back he's finally coming back i love crash bandicoot don't get me wrong i streamed the games i played the games on stream and I cannot wait for Spiral 1, 2, and 3. Remade, remastered. I even saw a gameplay of one of the bosses. And it, it, it felt so good. That nostalgia feeling felt so good. To see one of my favorite video games coming back. Oh man. I can't wait for that. And a lot of these games come out this year. A lot of these games come out this year. That's... that's that's awesome. There's another game here that they I didn't get to see, but they did show it at um the after shows in E3. Lego DC Villains, I think it's called. I'm, I like Lego games. Don't get me wrong. I love the Lego games. They're really fun. I love the superhero ones at, at most. To play as a bad guy from beginning to end in this Lego game, I cannot wait for that. Cannot wait for that. Oh, man. That's all I have on the list. That's all I wanted to talk about, good and bad. Um, in my opinion, 
you know, everyone always asks other people, like, who do you think won? Who do you think lost? Uh, in my opinion, you know, EA lost. EA lost E3. They did not show much. A lot of the games they did show, nobody really cared about. The crowd was dead. Like, nobody really cheered or anything. Yeah, EA lost. Don't get me wrong, you guys got me excited with the Clone Wars DLC and Battlefield Five, But, I don't know. And in my opinion, who won? I can't believe this. I completely forgot. Nintendo! <laughs> I completely forgot about Nintendo, and I just got done watching Nintendo's Direct. We all knew it was coming. We all knew it was coming. And it's a port. It's a Smash port of, the, of Smash 4 coming to the Switch. A lot of people don't want to admit it. Even I heard about the rumors. Last year, I heard about the rumors, I think early this year, that the new Smash game is going to be a port. I mean, look at Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2 came out quick as hell because it's a port of 1. Even though it's a port, I am looking forward to the new Smash. All these characters, all these moves, all these things. Ridley, for some strange fucking reason, a playable character now. And more stages and more characters to come. I cannot wait for the new Smash. You're, you definitely know I'm going to record those damn moments. <laughs> Playing Smash with my friends. King DDD, the King DDD main is ready to go. <laughs> but, yeah. Those are my thoughts and opinions on, e, on uh, E3. I think EA lost, in all honesty. As hype as Nintendo was, as hype as Ubisoft got me, as hype as Square Enix got me, as hype as like a lot of games got me, I think Microsoft won this year's E3. I'm not counting their Xbox only games. I'm counting their 50 world premiere games that are going to be not only on Xbox but on other consoles. They showed 50 games world premiere. While everyone else showed, you know, like barely anything. I think Xbox won. Microsoft won this time. But, you know, I honestly don't care who won and lost. All I know is that I can't wait for these games to come out. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. Uh, I will be streaming, if not later, tomorrow. Because I do need to get back to doing that. I do need to get back to uploading more videos and stuff like that. I'm sorry to keep you all waiting. And I hope you enjoyed this little video I made. Um, if you feel like cursing me out or anything, I mean, go for it. Because a lot of people won't agree with my opinions. And that's on you. But thanks for watching. And I hope you all have a good Tuesday. Bye-bye. I forgot to mention <laughs> two more things. Because uh, there's so much stuff that got me hyped that I forgot to mention. Um... Let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee. I'm looking forward to those two games. Well, more let's go Eevee than Pikachu because those two games are basically remakes of Pokemon Yellow. And when I was a little kid, Pokemon Yellow was my very first Pokemon game. I can't wait for that. I can't wait to get let's go Eevee. I do want to get that game. And the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC. I cannot wait for that. I can't wait for that prequel DLC. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I can't wait for that prequel DLC to come out. Because I do like the Xenoblade Saga. I like Z I like Shulk's game. And I like Rex's game. So I can't wait for those two things to come out. And I'm pretty sure that's all I have to say. So I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.